Hi gamers! So, we already talked about the utility of the repairability being the biggest reason you should level your crafters, but what if I told you there was an equally big reason to level your gatherers? And that on top of being fun, it's extremely lucrative? In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of treasure maps, why you want to find them, how to use them, what they can get you, and how easy it is to level your gatherers in order to get them yourself for free. In addition, I'm going to give you some tips to making heaps of gil while you do it. Sound too good to be true? Sorry gamers, all of this is completely legit and any of you can do it. I'm Debbie and let's get gathering. Maps. Once you get any class to level 36, you can pick up the quest Treasures and Tribulations in Eastern Lenosia. This grants you the actions Decipher and Dig. Once you get your hands on a map, we'll cover how to gather them yourself in just a bit, but you can also get them from the market board. You use Decipher to get a super zoomed in image of where the treasure is buried. You find this corresponding place in the zone and use the action Dig to cause your chest to appear. You fight the monsters that are attracted to it and claim your prize. Or at least that's the gist of it. The lowest level treasure map is level 40, and then there are levels increased by 5 until level 60. There are also level 70, 80, and 90 maps. Any map you have in your inventory will indicate on it whether it is intended to be opened solo or whether it is intended for a full party, as well as its level. You can only have one map of each type in your inventory, but you can also have a deciphered one in your key items, one in your saddlebags, and an additional one on each retainer you have. You can find lists online of the possible reward items for opening a treasure chest of each level, and they're kinda cool. Some crafting mats, armor items, minions, gill, and tombstones. There's also unhidden treasure maps which drop, which give you the opportunity to claim even rarer loots. But the most lucrative part of maps comes from the levels 60, 70, and 80, and 90 full party maps. These maps have the possibility of opening a portal to an event zone. And these? <laughs> these are fun! They are full party, so you'll need to bring some friends, but not as many as you might think. We managed to do all of these at level 80 or 90 with only 4 people as long as 2 of them are playing a tank and a healer. It would take me 10 minutes just to describe all the fun things that can happen in these zones, and honestly it might spoil some of the excitement, so I won't. But getting through them is completely random. Different special monsters can spawn that release even greater loot, and every door you get through gives you treasure and gill. There are opportunities to get items in these areas that you simply can't get any other way. And this makes these items incredibly valuable, because there are so many random factors involved to get even the chance to find them. You may or may not get a portal. You may or may not get past the first room. You may have to run it dozens of times to find a particular item. That all means gill. If you go into a map zone, you need to check everything you get from it on the market board before you trash it, because they can absolutely be worth like a million gill plus. So you might be wondering how you get in on this. Sure, as I said before, you can buy maps on the market board, but you're shelling out between 10 and 50k depending on the day and server for something that may or may not pay off. As I said before, portals aren't guaranteed and the standard treasure isn't worth too much. If you complete your Wondrous Tales book each week, you get a free level 90 full party one for turning it in. That's a start. But you can also get one each day for gathering, for free. And that? That's where you make your gill. I hear you, leveling gathering sounds like work. Well, in my crafting video, we covered some ways you can level up your gatherers with little fuss, like grand company turn-ins, custom deliveries or leave quests, but there are other ways. So here's some tips. Fishing. I've talked about ocean fishing before, and I do it every single day on my stream, but if you want to level a gathering class in a hurry, you need to do this. What? You didn't know you can gather treasure maps on your fisher? Well, you can. So here's what you do. Step 1. Unlock ocean fishing. Super easy, can do it as a level 1 to 2 fisher, takes no time at all. Step 2. If you have a free company, ask them to put up a gathering experience action, earth and water. But this is optional. Step 3. Food. Eat something before your fishing trip for the bonus experience. 
Bonus tip, you can eat twice to be full for double the duration. If only that worked in real life. Step four, pick up a survival manual or manuals. You can get the company issue survival manual from your grand company if you are a private first class for 1,440 seals. That will give you a 150% boost to your experience up to a maximum experience gain of 250,000. This is good until level 40. You can also buy ones from script vendors that go all the way up to level 80 with comparable experience gains. You want fast levels? These will give you fast levels. Step five, ocean fish. Keep as many of these buffs up as you can at all times and you should see the levels absolutely fly by. Don't be surprised to get eight to 10 levels per boat under level 50 if you're lucky and get some spectral currents. The tough part is remembering to upgrade your gear and complete your class quests between sailings. I'd give more info than that, but in my experience, this is simply the fastest way to level Fisher, so stick with this and you can't go wrong. Botanist and Miner. Okay, if you wanted to just zerg these down like Fisher, there is a way. It's not exciting, but it can make you wealthy. <laughs> Only you know if the gill is worth it to you, so no pressure. As I said previously, you can also just level up these classes via turn-ins, grand company turn-ins, custom deliveries, leave quests. These are all very viable ways to level these gatherers. But if you're looking for something more, well, don't say I didn't warn you. The diadem. I've mentioned this briefly in my crafting video, but there's a lot more to it. Here's how it's done. Step one, unlock the diadem. You have to have access to the firmament and there are guides on that. I'll link one below. Step two, do steps two to four I mentioned for Fisher. Get all the experience buffs you can possibly get for gathering and layer them on like sunscreen to pasty white spring flesh. Step three, turn on the tunes. Get comfortable, get snacks, drinks, and blare your favorite playlist. You'll be here for a while. Step four, enter the diadem and gather, and gather, and gather for an hour or two or until it kicks you out, however much you can stomach. If you keep the manual and the food on, you should be getting really decent experience. Not as much as ocean fishing maybe, but enough to convince you that this isn't so bad. You're jamming and completely zoned out, so you'll end up remembering this as a pleasant experience. Also, remember to shoot things when your gauge is full. Step five, get that stuff you gathered certified. Leave the diadem and talk to the guy at the booth who will inspect what you have gathered and stamp it for quality. This is important because this is how you get scripts and how you'll be able to sell what you have gathered on the market board. Step six, spend your scripts and sell your goods. Use scripts to buy any number of furnishing items, dyes, or etc. from the script vendor and sell on the market board. Just make sure the item you're purchasing is tradable if you want to make money from it. Now, and this is important, well, saying hi to my patrons over at Patreon and reminding you to also like, subscribe, and comment is important, but... Okay, don't get mad at me. You're going to go onto your retainer and check the stacks and stacks of things you just spent hours gathering on the market board and you're going to feel devastated. You're going to dislike this video and all caps comment, this stuff is garbage and isn't worth anything, but that's not true. Sure, it can be as low as 39 gil each in some cases, but from the time you spent there, you should have a large number of stacks of it and that adds up. Also, this stuff sells very quickly because people use it for crafting and you're going to be able to sell almost all of it within the day. It seems pretty common to make 100k plus from a couple of hours of gathering in the diadem. Sure, that isn't etherous shattering, but this is as a bonus to getting your gatherers up to level so you can start harvesting your free daily maps. That's what this is about, the maps. Keep that in mind. Also, if your experience is completely different from mine, please let me know in the comments. I have done this for multiple characters and it seems to be pretty consistent, but if that isn't the case, let me know. Okay, so I've covered maps, the reason you want to level a gatherer, and Fisher, the easiest gatherer to level, and how you can make additional gill in the diadem with your miner and botanist. There's just one more thing I wanted to cover. If you've gotten this far in the video, Thank you. You are one of the reasons this channel has become such a huge success in such a short amount of time. 
I'm going to start giving out bonus tips and tricks at the end of my videos. I'm giving everyone a heads up on this one. If you're a credits watcher, I want to reward you. So spread the word. If you can take the time to comment below, use the word apricot in your comment to show me and others that staying till the end has its benefits. And be sure to stay tuned next time for your bonus tip. Thank you gamers, and I'll see you in game.